Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. My name is Sam Omashe. My column, Fura and Amala Summit, will be read to you. After blood is shed, we shed tears in vain. But tears take a journey of their own, leaking through our pores and twisting down our faces with cheeky authority. This happened in Plateau State recently on a night where herdsmen came for cowardly plunder. Parents cried, children cowered, whole villages mourned, and wives watched widowhood fall upon them as their husbands expired in the sultry omen of their blood. Tragedy especially of this sort does not flash a signal. It relishes an impunity of arrival. It has not for a long while in Plateau where the people were getting used to a strange birth called peace. Until the recent gruesome episodes, the residents regaled themselves to their own narratives of tranquility. But with their secret joy tortured, they thought in the words of the poet Walt Whitman, quote, Something startled where I thought I was safest. End quote. The herdsmen are known there to be minorities in the place. They may not have numbers, but they overwhelm through stealth onslaughts. They have no heritage or rights or memorials in Plateau, but they want to build memories into memorials. The dark, blood stained memories of boys, girls, mothers, and fathers put to death, the remembrances of loved ones cut down in their homes. The killers don't live in Plateau. That was what riled Governor Simon Bako Lalong at a town hall meeting, where he ordered the police to fish out the killers. But he knows their collaborators are locals. How can they say that people killed and there is no arrest? He asked incredulously. Are those killing others spirits? I don't think you can kill 15 human beings and claim you are spirits and there is no arrest. Police, you should take the community leaders and the Argos with you so that they can tell you those behind the killings. It is the first time ever the Argos will be so brobeaten in public. Argos are the Fulani community leaders. The rage of the governor paid off and some Argos and other community leaders have been taken away for questioning. They have been taken to Abuja for grilling. The governor's charge exposed one of the great points about fighting terror of the bands of butchers. The first weapon we need is intelligence. It means the communities know who the killers are. Indigenes suspect the leaders of the Fulani in the state. They believe the killers are no strangers to the Argos. If the Argos know them, it means they had tips about the boys of plunder. They knew they were coming. They saw the shadow of the goons. They knew some locals would die. They did nothing. It means they were maniacal accomplices. It means they have blood on their conniving fingers. If the investigators determine this, it is a critical first step in stopping the murderous spasms. We hope that Abuja will not fail Joss, and the security forces will not cow to considerations that undermine an unvarnished analysis of who the demons are. Community policing can manifest in any dimension depending on its conceptualizing. It was reported recently that the northern governors were contemplating its version of Amotekun, which is also a sort of community policing. The militants are by their own barbarism and bloodlust helping to evangelize Amotekun. We cannot leave the enforcement of peace in the hands of a governor alone. It must be a shared responsibility. The issue of Plateau is baffling. Some of the disagreements arise from the rustling of cows and destruction of farms. 
This tension should have been resolved by referring grievances to the councils set up for local peace and harmony. Some of them decided that bloodshed topples reconciliation. This is at the root of the mayhem. When humans plunder like the herdsmen have done, they do it for no other reason than that they can. Such acts are associated with Lago, one of Shakespeare's enduring characters. He is a plunderer. The Shakespeare critic and poet Samuel Coleridge describes such acts as, quote, motiveless malignity. The militants kill not out of reason or clear human profit. They are creatures of base instincts. They are benighted, distorted souls. But they are not spirits. They have blood, flesh, and bones like all of us. The difference is that they want others not to occupy space, but graves. Governor Lalong has other ideas. Ditto all those who belong to civilization. If they would not let decent beings occupy space, then they have no place here. Fifty years uh, after the Nigerian crisis, which some people call the Nigerian Biafra Civil War or the Nigerian Civil War and, and so on. Um, would you say that the conditions that led to the crisis of that era has been overtaken by contemporary citizens or we are still in the grips of those causes? We are still in the grip of those causes. We haven't learned any lesson from them. Uh, now, I believe that the civil war could have been avoided, yes, if we had not been too obsessed with power. When Ojuku said, on Aburi, we stand. We stand. I believe that he has his own fault. What were they? Power. The Jews fault was power? Power. How so, sir? Power. He wanted power. But when he said that a bully will stand, we are keeping away his propensity, his love for power. What he might have done if a, a body had been granted, it's another matter. I won't, um, it's not for me to say that. But at least a body offered a platform, what we call now uh, restructuring. A body offered a platform. I happen to be the main person who drafted the papers with which Ujuku went to Aburi. Okay. And that we're talking about the restructuring. Yes, yes, yes. yes. It's good that you said that you, you, you drafted the papers because I was, I was going to ask you that question because um, some people thought that there was some kind of error by those on the federal side that they shouldn't have uh, appended their signature to Aburi. And, and, and that there were other ways that the agreements could have, could have been worked out. So what were the objections to Aburi? They know. What I were mean, the objections of the federal side, the Gowan and the his, uh, technocrats? Yes. What were their objections to Aburi? Yes because they felt they considered too much to Juku. Yes. What were those sticking points? 
The sticking post was about the power of a state, mm. a region. A region. Yes. To say, no, we won't accept this. This is not our idea about autonomous states. Yes. yes. Let's keep at arm's length what the old idea of uh, the federal government having overriding power over everything. Yes. That was the issue. And Ojuku said no. And Aburi agreed with him. Gawan at the meeting accepted this, but when he left the meeting, the Federal Permanent Secretary yes, yes. advised him otherwise. So, the Onaburi will stand, became an issue. They didn't want Aburi anymore, even though they agreed, Gawan agreed yes. with it at the time. Mm -hmm. But as I said, whether, whether Ojuku would have, you know, uh, whether he, advantage. No, whether he would have abided by his acceptance of a bully, I don't know. What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? You have to explain that, sir. You know, a bully, yes. He, he considered a lot to the states. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had implemented a bully as Ojuku insisted, would he, Ojuku, have been satisfied with that? Once you leave, the scene of the meeting, mm. would he have accepted that? If he could be relied upon to stay with Abuji, uh, with Aburi mm. and not go beyond it, that's all right. Go beyond it to do what? To arrogate more powers to himself. What, what sort of powers? Powers of, uh, to powers of government. Yes. Yes. Like part because he had there was an ego problem between both of them, himself and uh, Yakubu Gohan. Yes. He felt he was superior in rank. Or he should be superior in rank as the Supreme Commander over Gohan. Did you think that those who said they didn't want Aburi felt like by conceding Aburi they had already created Biafra for Ojuku. Because Ojuku will not want to report to Gohan as his supreme commander. But you leave that to find out what he would have done. Yes. You didn't give him the chance. Mm. On Aburi alone, as Aburi as Aburi would have saved Nigeria. Whether Ojuku would have been satisfied with Aburi. I hope I'm making myself clear. Yes, you are saying that it was possible that Ojuku might have exploited that position to have created also tension that probably could have still led to a civil war. Yes, that is possible. Hmm. But we didn't give him the opportunity to commit a crime. To commit, a, yes, to do what <laughs> he wanted, he yes. might have done. Yes. Yes. He was right to say on a bully, we, we stand. Mm. Let us stand on a bully. Okay. Yes. You refuse to stand on a bully mm. be, because you believe that Ojuku would not have stopped mm. with a bully, that he might have gone further, mm. you know, that Biafra was already so. in, in his mind. But Aburi did not, Aburi as Aburi did not create the Biafra, mm. no. So Ojuku at a point 
Where do you say it? When I bully, we stand. You condemned him already because you thought that his idea, he was superior, he considered himself superior to Gawan and all that. And you jumped to the conclusion that we, we must not obey Apuri. Yes. So it was a crime that was created before it was ever before, done. Yes. <laughs> that is the thing. And then the Kanu met you once and you were reported to have called him a hero. You didn't. Yes. Why did you respond to reporting that said you called him, you are my hero? No, 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 no. Anybody who knows me <laughs> will know that I can never use that kind of language. I tried to talk sense to Nandi. You know, I mediated the trouble between him and Aneze. Called several meetings, both in my house in, in, in uh, Nugu. Mm. Uh, organized lunch for the two sides. And brought them together again in my house in the village. In Atani, my village. Mm. Fisted, gave them Give him lunch. Yes. But right from the beginning, now they came to see me several times, as I was. They came to see me several times. And I keep on saying to him, moderate your language. Biafra, you say Biafra today. There's nothing like that. There's no, no Biafra today. Yes. You're not going to have a referendum. We want restructuring to bring something very close to what you want. But the idea of Biafra today, please give it up. We want to moderate our utterances and their actions. I said, I could not have said that you're my hero yeah. in what sense? It was no, 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 no. Yeah. So what do you think was the issue with him that he was insisting on Biafra? Was it a private dream? Was it an opportunism? I think it's probably a private dream. I'll put it like that. He might have had a dream. Mm. He might have had a dream that he is destined to give life to Biafra. He might have had a dream. From my discussions with him, I think it's probably true that he had a dream. A fantasy. Yes, fantasy. And you couldn't talk him out of it. I said to him, you will play a very useful role to the Igbo cause. But that role is not in arrogant, let me use the word, arrogant insistence mm. on Biafra. Mm. Yes. Because it was so arrogant. If you are close to him, you you tend to be put off yeah. by that arrogance. Mm. And there are people who believe that only I could talk sense mm. into him. And I tried. I tried to him to make him realize that Biafra is not, is not something anybody in the present day in Nigeria. The best thing we could do is to restructure, achieve maximum autonomy within 
Nigerian state. Nigerian state. Weak. Yes, it is. Yes. Weak Nigerian state. I thought I was succeeding. I didn't know that I was not succeeding at all. So I gave up. I gave up. Do you, do you agree with the setting of Amoteku? Entirely. Entirely. Now, what we did most is security of life and property. That's the primary function of government. And I said, no, oh, I put that provision there. Every word used in part, part two yes. of the Constitution was mine. I drafted it. Mm. Um, now, if it is the primary function of government, any government, what the name, should not oppose anything that will enable that objective to be achieved. Unless what we are doing is prohibited by the Constitution. By the Constitution. And that's what um, the Attorney General is asserting. But it's not. I'm talking it's not prohibited. It's not. There's nothing in the Constitution that prohibits I'm talking. All we are doing, all I'm talking is doing is mobilize the population to try to discharge the primary function. We're talking about function. Yeah. Yes. Forget the institution. Police is only an institution. Yes. The Nigeria Police Force, let me not say police. The Nigeria Police Force that the Constitution says shall be the only force is only an institution. It's nothing to do with the function. The function is there. Yeah. The function is there. The people should help. The people should take steps to save themselves from destruction. Now, um, to, to conclude this interview, I just want to ask you, um, what do you think will happen to the whole concept of restructuring this country. At one time, a few years ago, it was all the rage, but it looks like the temper and the tempo of um, the debate has really scaled down. And, and do you think there's any hope to restructure this country? As an elder statesman, do you think that there's any hope that we could ever, ever sit down without the kind of distrust that we had around Aburi the three years ago. Can we ever have that kind of atmosphere without distrust to sit down as a people? Because we have to have that trust first. There's that trust that will make the meeting any meaningful. Uh, restructuring of this country defined in the way that I have defined it to mean autonomous, using autonomous in quote, autonomous states operating within a weak federal system. Yes, each each state to be allowed to manage its own affairs. Mm. Um, restructuring in that sense is inevitable, inevitable. This is going to happen whatever, whether anybody likes it or not. You're optimistic. Yes, because what is inevitable? You cannot stop. Mm. It may take time. That's what you should do. Yes. 
Okay. Um, we've had here a very uh, intellectual uh, encounter with uh, one of Nigeria's uh, constitutional lights, Professor Ben Wabuze. Thank you very much for being on this show. It's my pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. Just before the program ends, this is my poem in honor of Leah Sharibu. We hear it's a boy. Be boy and girl. You might have his baby, but he does not make you his. Assert now the tigress. If he keeps you a mom, that should not keep you mom. Leah, as your sweet child grows, let us hear you growl. Thank you for watching the program today. You can catch up with my published columns on www.samomashae.com. Also follow me on Twitter. My handle is at Sam And until next time, be good. <laughs>